Okay, uh, this tutorial we are going to be uh, getting a update image for the firmware of the Wi-Fi Pineapple. If you're unfamiliar with that, uh, it's a project uh, started by Darren Kitchen, who um, and basically what it is, it's it's a piece of hardware uh, for pen testing networks. It's uh, basically a small little router you can carry with you that they just came out with version 5 of it. Um, and uh, just like a lot of routers, it's running Linux, a, uh, I believe it's a uh, OpenWRT version of uh, Linux for routers. And um, this will be our first example at taking firmware from a, for a ARM device such as a router and basically working with it because it's going to have multiple files and partitions in it. I'm just going to show you how to extract some of the stuff from within that file. But our first thing we need to do is we need to download it, uh, which you can go to the Pineapple. Uh, it's wifipineapple.com website, and there is a link at the top for downloads. I'm just going to wget the latest image and put it into an output called upgrade.bin. Uh, so, oh, you know, let's make a directory called pineapple if I haven't already created it. And let's move that file into there so we're working in a clean directory. So there we are, we have a bin image. I can say file as we have in the previous tutorials, upgrade bin, and it will show us some information. It's showing us that this is a squash file system. Uh, of a little Eden uh, version uh, type and a few other bits of information um, but that is just the first portion it's looking at the header of that file and since this is an image file it actually has multiple headers in it and it's just files just looking at that first header there so the way that we are going to look at what's in the rest of the image is a little bit different than our last tutorial where we used fdisk because if we were to use sudo fdisk-l to try to list partitions. It's not going to find anything because they're not really partitions, I guess. They're, they're files within the image and um, then some of them are file systems inside a squash file as we just saw with that header. So there are no partitions, um, but we can still extract that information. Um, so we're going to use a tool that if you ever looked up anything on working with firmware, you've probably have come across it. It's in your repositories and it's called Binwalk. And Binwalk is just going to give us a bunch of information uh, on what's inside that file. So we'll say Binwalk and the name of our file. And it's actually going to take, uh, it's not a very big file, this uh, firmware, so it shouldn't take too long. But basically it's looking through it byte by byte and finding those file headers. Uh, and right away it found our squash file system just as this file did, but it's still looking through the file. And in this particular case, this uh, first little uh, section of the file is the largest part. So it's going to take a little while for it to come up. In this case, I can tell you right now, there are two other parts, I believe, to this file. Uh, one will be the um, kernel image, and the other one is some sort of com other compressed data, uh, which we're not going to look at today. Today, we're basically going to be looking at this first file system, the squash file system. We're going to pull that out uh, and uh, basically extract the information from it, um, which we've done before with squash file systems, but it's just a matter of getting that squash file system out of this file so that we can use it. Again, the formatting's kind of messed up looking here just because I have the text so big to make it easier for you guys to read in the video, um, but we have our first little section here, squash file system. Uh, it tells us the size and bytes um, and some other information, block size, when it was created. Then we have our next file within this image file, uh, which is a um, the U image file, which is a kernel header, uh, a kernel file, uh, the Linux kernel. Uh, and you can see a little bit more information on that. And then we have another um, section here which is a LZMA image file um, which looks like it has to do with the w open WRT but uh, right now we're gonna look at the basic main file system here which is the squash file system and the way we're going to extract it is we're going to use DD just like we would to 
clone a partition or a hard drive to an image or another hard drive, um, sudo dd, we're going to say if for the input file, which would be our upgrade bin file in this case. And then we're going to say output file, we're going to put it um, into a another image file uh, that's basically going to be our um, our squash file system. So we'll say pineapple, uh, and well, it, again, the extensions don't really matter. That's more for the user, but we'll call it squash.fs since that's what squash file systems are usually labeled as. Now, again, we can't just do that because we need to tell it basically where to stop. We don't want to copy the whole image. We just want to copy the squash file system portion of that. So first off, we're going to say bs dash uh, equals one, saying you know basically go through it bit by bit. I believe is what that's saying. Uh, then we're going to say count, and count is basically how far you want to go, and we need the size in bytes, and that would be this number right here in this particular case. So it's telling us the size, so basically we're saying start at the beginning of this file and go through it. I'm going to hit enter and let that get going because it might take a little bit. We're saying, okay, as sudo or root, use the dd command to copy from the input file Oh, it's done already. Upgrade bin. We're going to put the output, the output file, uh, of equals whatever we want to name it, in this case, pineapple.squashfs. And then read through it byte by byte until you have counted out this many bytes, which is the size of that file. So now we can list this out, and you can see that we have two files, our original bin file, uh, which is 6.9 megabytes, and then we have our pineapple squash file system, which is five megabytes. And now we can use the unsquash uh, command, which again, uh, you need to have uh, squashfs-tools, I believe is the name of the package. It should be in your repositories if you just search for squashfs. Squashfs tools will install this. Um, and we're just going to say unsquash pineapple.squashfs. And didn't take long because again, it's only five megabytes uh, compressed into the squash file system. But you'll see if we list out now, we have a folder called rootfs, and we can list what is in there. And you can see it is the file system for the Wi Fi pineapple. Um, and if we use the du command dash h for human readable and tell it to look in that folder, you can see it's now 20 megabytes. So compressed again as the squash file system, it compressed it down to 5 megabytes, and that's why it's compressed. Uh, and then when it's uncompressed, it's 20 megabytes. And you can always compress it again uh, using, I think it's the make uh, mk squash fs, which I'm not sure if I've gone over that in previous tutorials, but we'll get into that more in a future tutorial. Um, but uh, I just wanted to show you that. The second half of the tutorial is stuff we've gone over before, but I mainly wanted to focus on uh, binwalk here, at least our first look at binwalk. We're going to be looking at stuff, and we manually did this. There are also ways to get binwalk to extract files, uh, which is actually relatively simple, um, but we'll go over that in a future tutorial. But for right now, I wanted to go over how to extract just one file using DD after grabbing information from our uh, from our bin file using uh, binwalk. So again, to get information, I'm going to shrink my text down here. I'm going to say binwalk uh, our, our upgrade dot bin. So theoretically, this is basically any firmware you can pull from from a device. So if a website offers an upgraded uh, firmware for your router or whatever device it is, uh, you can use binwalk, look at it like this, and it will show you the information of what files are basically wedged into this bin file. And again, in this particular case, we are looking at, we want the squash file system, uh, and we used uh, basically from this, what we cared about was the size, because it's the first um, portion in there, so we're starting at the beginning with our DD, and we gave it the um, the uh, count of this. So we're saying start at the beginning. We did BS for one, and we said basically start at the beginning and count this many bytes, uh, and then stop, because that's where that file system or that file stopped. Again, uh, this is a very simple example, uh, mainly because the Wi-Fi pineapple is a very open 
projects, so you, they kind of want you to be able to modify stuff. Um, other routers and stuff uh, may not be this straightforward because they might use other types of compressions. Um, and I guess it isn't technically really harder. It's just different, and it's like this technique. You could pull out the file just as we did, but then the squash file system might be compressed using a different compression method, and so you would have to use different uh, steps at the second portion of this tutorial to uncompress those. Anyway, I hope that you found this useful. Um, lots of fun for me working with images from ARM devices, because uh, an example like this, um, not even looking at modifying that and maybe recompressing it to change and maybe get root access on a certain device or add features is that maybe you can just go into this squash file system that we extracted and look at the files and see how it works and maybe you can find uh, a security loophole or a feature. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, I have a webcam that I use to watch my daughter. Uh, it's like a baby cam, but I got a webcam because they're cheaper and uh, I'm able to do a lot more with it. It's running Linux. Um, and I didn't modify the firmware, but I was able to get the firmware and search through it and find the video stream because by default it has a web view that I can view. Uh, basically, it's just updating a still image over and over and over again. But the camera also has a microphone and a speaker on it. And to hear the audio, I needed the actual video stream, which the web interface only works with um, Internet Explorer. But I was able to search through that file system from a, um, a firmware update that I got from their website, searched through it for different strings, and I actually found the basic URL to a video stream that was an ASF file, and I could just use mPlayer to stream actual video from the camera with audio. So uh, giving me, you know, obviously could have been done before, but for some reason their interface, they just set it up to only work with Internet Explorer uh, for that audio feature. Uh, but I was able to get it to work on my Linux system just by looking at the firmware. So again, just giving you ideas of what you can do with it, not just modifying it and, and stuff like that, but just understanding it better like, gives you more freedom to do more things with your hardware. Anyway, there should be an annotation on the screen to the full playlist on this series. A new video every Monday. I hope that you're enjoying this series. If you are, be sure to like the, this video so that I know. Subscribe above so you don't um, uh, miss any of my uploads. And uh, I hope that you visit my site, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. Should be a link in the description. And I hope that you have a great day.